Hey y'all, Data Guy here, and today I'm here to talk to you about acid, and not the kind that makes you see cartoons, but acid data within databases. Um, so acid is a big concept in the realm of data engineering. It's been around for really as long as data engineering has been, um, and it's essentially a set of principles for ensuring the reliability and integrity of your data. Um, so ACID is an acronym for atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. And so again, set of principles that will guide the design of transactional database systems to achieve that reliability. So what I'm going to aim to accomplish in this video is just explore the foundational aspects of ACID, uh, give you some of the historical context, why it came about, uh, the benefits and limitations uh, of its application within different use cases, give you some of the best use cases that you'll want to actually use the ACID framework for, uh, and then I'll also talk about some best practices for implementing it um, so that you aren't going in blind when you're trying to implement these principles, but actually have a little bit of a guide uh, to teach you on how to implement them and so you're not doing it wrong the first time and then doing it right the second. Um, let's do it right the first time, right? Test and prod. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first things first, I'm the realist, and let's break down each step of uh, asset here. So it's a model that's to ensure that database transactions are processed reliably. So that's kind of the guiding purpose of the ACID principles. Um, and then each of them individually, uh, you have atomicity, and that is that each transaction must be treated as a single unit. So each, you know, let's say I buy an item, that transaction is a single unit that either completes in its entirety or does com not complete at all. So that means that if for some reason part of my transaction fails, like you know my credit card number is invalid, then the <clears throat> entire transaction fails and no data is brought into the database. So there can be no uh, entries that have invalid data like a null state um, or something there. So that's that first line of defense against making sure, hey, we want to make sure that each piece of data that comes in here is of the highest quality and conforms to these standards, uh, which brings me to the second point, which is consistency. Um, consistency is guaranteeing that the transaction can only bring a database from one valid state to another. There cannot be any kind of inconsistent state where, like I just said, there's a fragment of data um, and that any data that's written to the database must pass all your defined rules, constraints, cascades, and triggers to actually be ingested into the database. So you're not validating the data once it comes into your database, you're validating it before it even is entered into your database. Then third, you have isolation, which is ensuring that concurrent transactions occur without leading to data inconsistencies. And what that means is that each transaction needs to be isolated from each other, making it appear as if there's the only as if it is the only one interacting with the database. And this can be done by you know, handling your transaction sequentially so that it's, as each tra transaction is generated, it's then brought into the database before another transaction is processed and brought into the database. That's just one implementation, but that's the guiding principle here bet between isolation. Then fourth, we have durability, and that is assuring that once a transaction has been committed, it will remain so, so that that transaction will continue to be valid even in the event of a power loss, crash, error, um, and this is often ensured by storing changes in a non-volatile memory database. So having a separate database that is keeping track of all of your uh, changes or replicating it to another database as well. So those are the four guiding principles. So now we'll kind of go into some of the pros and cons of taking the ACID approach. So to help me illustrate some of the pros and cons, I also want to just give you an example of what a transaction looks like to illustrate some of those properties I just talked about. So in this example, let's say we have two changes that need to be applied, so two pieces that need to be added to the database. There's only two states that can be allowed if there's two changes that need to be applied. You can either have a final state where both the changes are applied or a final state where none of the changes were applied. You cannot have a final state where only one of those changes is applied. So just think of that when you're thinking of you know, ACID databases, that's kind of the dividing line between making something you know, possible and not possible is you can't have just incomplete data entries at all. Um, and so some of the pros of this are data integrity, asset compliance really helps prevent data corruption, ensures a high data integrity and provides trust in transaction processing, which 
if you're doing transactions and typically involves money, that's really important that you get it right every time. Um, it also is very simple. It's a, it can be very simple. It provides a clear set of rules for developers to follow, which then makes the database system easier to understand and manage because you have clear guidelines of how to interact and, ma and manage it. Um, and then you also have error handling. So atomicity durability properties assist in handling errors gracefully by making sure that incomplete transactions, like in this example, don't affect the database state. Um, however, on the con side of things, there is a performance performance overhead to using this. You know, you have strict requirements that can lead to significant performance overhead, where you have to have another system that's managing all these changes, and that can be difficult in systems with high transaction volumes or distributed environments. Um, and then also scalability challenges, acid properties, especially things like isolation can restrict the ability of a system to actually scale out because it limits the number of concurrent transactions. You know, when you're dealing with a really large business, you might have hundreds of concurrent transactions occurring at a single time. And so having a system that can manage that can be expensive if you're trying to maintain acid properties. Um, and then finally, kind of in tandem with that is complexity in distributed systems. So maintaining acid properties across distributed systems can be pretty complex and resource intensive because there's a need for coordination and also synchronization across all of those nodes that are maintaining your database. So that can be difficult to maintain if you're running a distributed database uh, type setup. So what are some of the best use cases for acid data? Transactional data. Um, I mean, it's really obviously crucial any systems where data integrity and consistency are more important than performance and scalability, but these are systems like financial systems. Tra ensuring all your transactions are processed reliability reliably is really important for banks and financial institutions. Can't be any data loss, there can't be any corruption, and they might not only lose money, but also be in trouble with regulators. Um, and then also things like e-commerce platforms, any kind of business is probably gonna be using acid data to avoid issues like double billing, order duplication, et cetera. Um, and then also healthcare systems. Medical records and treatment information really require high consistency and durability to make sure that you're getting the right medicine and the proper care. So that's another system, uh, area where acid data properties are super important to making sure achieving positive health outcomes even. So now I also want to give you a framework here for deciding if you actually need an acid database. Um, and so I would say the main four th critical things are Number one, accessing the, or assessing the criticality of data integrity. If data integrity is critical for the business or application, asset compliance is likely essential. Uh, number two, evaluate your transaction requirements. Systems with complex transactions involving multiple operations or those requiring strong consistencies are ideal candidates for ACID databases. Uh, and then three, consider your, consider your system scale and performance needs. If the system demands high scalability or faces performance bottlenecks with ACID compliance, alternatives like basically available soft state eventual consistency, which I'm showing up here as kind of an alternative, might be considered. Um, and then finally, analyze your data access patterns. High frequency read and write operations or large volumes of concurrent transactions might affect the decision to fully implement all ACID properties. So now, We've kind of covered exactly what ACID is, framework for deciding if you need it. I want to dive into some best practices for implementing ACID within your database. So in terms of how you want to kind of approach introducing ACID principles into your use case, number one, assess your requirements, kind of using that framework I just laid out, and then make sure you have an appropriate database system for ACID properties. Traditional relational databases like PostgreSQL and MySQL are well known for their strong ACID compliance. However, if you're dealing with larger scale distributed systems, newer alternatives like Google Spanner or Amazon Aurora are also designed to maintain ACID properties at scale. So just make sure you select a database that aligns with your system's needs for consistency, scalability, and performance. Um, and then when you're designing for how your transactions are actually being processed, make sure they're following ACID compliance. Structure complex operations into transactions that can roll back completely if any step fails, so that you have an <clears throat> just kind of built into every step of that process a nuclear button that says, hey, if anything goes wrong, kill this process because we don't want any bad data. Also, implement strict schema validations, constraints, and database triggers to ensure that all transactions leave your data in a consistent state in line with consistency. Um, and then also, 
For isolation, use appropriate isolation levels that balance the need for accuracy with performance. SQL databases provide various isolation levels like read committed, repeatable read, serializable. Understand the trade-offs between these different levels to choose the right one for your application. Um, and then also durability. Ensure durability through proper configuration of your database's logging and checkpointing mechanisms. And this might include tuning things like the write ahead logging for recovery and data integrity. Then also make sure you're implementing robust error handling and recovery procedures. Design your system with comprehensive error handling that can appropriately manage transaction failures, things like retry logic, exception handling, compensating transactions when possible, and also set up robust backup and recovery procedures to handle system failures without data lost. You'll also want to test your system to make sure that it adheres to ACID principles under various conditions. Do things like stress testing, do system failures, network partitions, concurrent access scenarios. Identify those issues in transaction handling in that more development state rather than waiting for it to occur in production. Um, and then monitor and optimize that performance over time. ACID compliance can really impact system performance, especially in high load environments. So make sure you're monitoring your system's performance closely and optimizing it without compromising ACID properties. And this can include things like optimizing queries, indexing, or even revisiting your transaction management logic. Um, and then finally, last two things are more just educational. Make sure your development and operations teams understands the importance of ACID properties and how they're implemented within your system and provide regular training and updates on best practices in database management to help maintain the integrity and performance of your database operations. And then finally, regular audits, regularly review your transaction logs, performance metrics, compliance checks to help ensure that ACID properties are being correctly implemented and maintained. Um, and this is obviously extra important in regulated industries where your data integrity and audit trails are really crucial. Um, so, that's all I have for you today. I hope this has been a good guide for getting you started with how you can start implementing asset properties in your own systems. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out.